So hello and welcome to the second lecture in Comp 1805, Discrete Structures 1. My name is Daryl Hill, I'm the instructor for this class. Um, the slides we're using are based on slides uh, by Robert Collier. So again, the disclaimer is I have modified them. So if you find any mistakes, they're likely mine. Um, and anything that was done properly is, is the result of Dr. Robert Collier. So, uh, yeah, so this is the first topic in our in our uh, discrete math, discrete structures course. Um, so propositional logic. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to talk about the, the fundamentals of propositional logic. So assertions or declarative statements that have a value of true or false are called propositions. So we've touched on this a little bit in the previous lecture, in the introduction, um, that we can make statements and we can assign values to those statements. So in this case, that is um, true or false are the values that we are interested in. Yeah, so true or false. Um, and so the statements that, that we can assign these values to are called propositions. So for example, I am, in, I am your instructor. So that's a proposition, and we can assign a value to it. In this case, the value is true. Um, you are sitting in a Comp 1805 lecture. Uh, well, I mean, it depends how you define sitting in a Comp 1805 lecture, but if you're watching this video, we can assume that that is also true. Um, Canada is the largest country in the world. Of course, we should specify by geography or by population, but even by geography, I think it gets beat by Russia. I'm not sure. It depends on the, really depends on the politics over there. So that could be true or it could not be true. But regardless, if we knew the politics, we would know uh, precisely whether uh, Canada is in fact the largest country in the world. <clears throat> so not all declarative statements are propositions, right? So we can make a declarative statement such as X is taller than 250 centimeters or Y plus Z equals five. Now, uh, what value can we associate with these statements? Well, we don't know because x, y, and z are what's called variables, and they can take on. Yeah, so these are variables, and they can take on different values. Right, so unless we know the values, we can't assign um, truth values to these to these statements. Unless we know the values of x, y, and z, um, we cannot say that x is taller than 250 centimeters. We don't have enough information at that time. So they're not they're not propositions. Uh, we'll come back to that a little bit later, though. There are ways to to work with variables. <coughs> Um, so speaking of variables in math, we can assign values to a symbol, which is a variable. So we can say x equals 16. Uh, you see this in computers a lot too. If you've done any programming up to this point, then you've probably most likely used variables. <laughs> um, so we can do the same thing with propositions. So we can assign them to a variable. So we can say y is equal to the proposition, it is raining today. And this can help make logic expressions easier to work with. <clears throat> um, a proposition that cannot be divided into smaller propositions is called primitive or atomic. Um, so in this case, it is raining today is a primitive or atomic proposition, since we can't really say that um, it's a combination of, of more than one truth value. It has exactly one truth value. So that's a primitive or atomic it's like a single value in math, so uh, 16 or x is equal to 16 is a is a primitive uh, expression. Um, and in math, we can build complex expressions. So in this case, uh, 3 squared plus 16 is it's still it's a math expression, uh, but it's more complex because we've used operators like plus, minus, uh, multiplication, and division. And similarly, uh, in propositional logic, there are logic operators that we can use on atomic propositions to build up uh, more complicated logic expressions. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so you may find that arithmetic expressions and logical propositions seem similar um, because it's they are both uh, 
a branch of math, basically. And uh, the branch of math that we are working with um, with propositions is called propositional logic. Right? So just as so arithmetic expressions can be sub subjected to unary operators, uh, like negation, so negative 5. That's not, I'm not combining that with another, with another number, I'm just saying that the 5 is negative. <clears throat> and we can connect um, arithmetic expressions with binary operators. Uh, we call them connectives, so addition, division, etc. So 2 plus 4 is a, is a math expression of 2 atomic math expressions that are, are combined with binary operators. Logical expressions also have unary and binary operators. So we'll see what that is. So if we have a proposition A, uh, then A must have a value of either true or false. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Similarly, uh, so if A is a proposition, then we have uh, what's called uh, so a, a logical knot or a negation, if you will. Um, we tend to, to call it a knot. So it, that's this little operator here. It's a unary operator. And uh, so it's called not A. If we read this, uh, this proposition aloud, we read it as not A. And uh, not A is true when A is false and false when A is true. So it, it's similar to a negation operator in math. Right. Um, so a binary operator, um, we can talk about the conjunction of two propositions. So if A and B are proposition, their conjunction, A and B, is also a proposition. And you read it aloud, as I just said, as A and B. And so it's this sort of inverted V here is this AND conjunction uh, operator. Um, so A and B has a value of true when both A and B have a value of true and otherwise A and B has a value of false. So we're going to go into more detail. Uh, well, actually, that is all the detail you need, but we're going to go over that a few more times, so um, you don't need to pick up all the details at this point. Um, and so you can think of it, you can think of A and B as similar to multiplication in uh, arithmetic. So um, if you think of, uh, if A and B are both true, so true and true equals true is similar to if I say one times one equals one, right? And if I say, if I have true and false, well, that's equal to false. And that's similar to if I take one times zero, then I get a zero. And the same thing with false and true um, is, you can think of it as 0 times 1. And false and false, of course, uh, 0 times 0 gives you 0. So as a, you know, a quick and dirty little heuristic, you can um, think of the logical AND operator as the, uh, similar to uh, multiplication. Um, there's also what's called an OR operator. So if A and B are propositions, their disjunction a or B is also a proposition, and we read that aloud as A or B, as you just heard. So A or B has a value, value of false when both A and B have a value of false, and otherwise A or B has a value of true. So if A is true or B is true, then A or B is true. But if neither of them are true, then it's false. And they can both be true as well. So this is... A little more of a stretch but it, it's still similar to math in the sense that if we consider true equal to 1 and false equal to 0 then a or b is similar to addition but uh, you know we we cap the maximum value to 1 all right and we can think of this or operator as a uh, logical or operator is similar to uh, the math operation of of plus although it's not exactly it, we're in a sense uh, putting some some limitations on our maximum values. Um, so it's not an exact, uh, it's not the perfect analogy, but uh, you know, if you stretch your imagination a little bit, it'll, it'll work good enough. So if we say that A has a value of true and B has a value of true, then A or B is equal to true. And we can think of it as similar to one plus one is equal to 
uh, in this case we say 1 but really what we we mean is not to 0 um, so true or false if a is equal to true and b is equal to false is equal to true that's similar to if we say 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 so as long as um, either a or b is equal to has some value other than 0 then when we add them together we get some value other than 0 um, and the only time that we get a value equal to 0 is if both of these are equal to 0 okay um, so yeah if you think back to your um, high school or elementary school days I don't know it's a long time ago for me I don't remember exactly where I saw this last um, most likely elementary school um, but uh, yeah you have these what are called the times tables right um, so how it works is I take uh, if I want to know 3 times 3 well 3 is here and 3 is here and so I follow uh, their intersection and I find that 3 times 3 equals 9 so I can if I want to know if I have a finite set of numbers and I want to know uh, the the values of multiplying them together I can make a table and then uh, you know just fill it in so 2 times 2 is equal to 4 uh, 2 t 2 times 1 is equal to 2 etc etc um, yeah so multiplication <coughs> tables specify the result when a binary operator is applied to the left operand is supplied by the row and the right operand is supplied by the column okay the tables are unfortunately limited because the collection of possible operands that is numbers is infinite so we can't um, we can't take an operator like multiplication and build a table that's comprehensive that gives us the answer to every possible uh, you know every possible combination of two numbers uh, we can't make that that table we can, as long as we take a finite set of numbers we can build it but uh, the set of numbers is infinite so the set of possible values for each operand is infinite <clears throat> however in po propositional logic the collection of possible values of our operands is finite so we have true or false right so um, in math an operand can go from well, if, if we stick to the positive numbers let's say stick to the uh, the whole numbers we can go from 0 to infinity um, but here we can only have true or false no matter what so there's only two so we can create a finite table describing the behavior of each operator as long as we have a finite number of operators in our logical expression um, we can build a table that gives us every possible combination of values and these are called truth tables so you can see a lot of these so a truth table has one column for each operand so in this case we have a and b our operands so it has one column for a and one column for b and then one additional column for the operator so if our expression is a and b uh, then we have uh, this second column over here that takes the the combination of a and b given whatever values I have over here so if I have say true or false then a and b would give me uh, false right so each table has two to the n rows one for each possible combination of truth values for the operand so n what do we mean by n well um, n is the number of operands <clears throat> so in this case we have uh, 2 to the power 2 rows because um, A and B are two operators or operands so if we had A B and C then we would have 2 to the 3 rows <laughs> And the final column we specify the result so we went over that a little bit earlier um, so this is this would be the truth table for a and b <clears throat> uh, so the negation of not a has a value of false when a is true and value of true when a is false so this is probably the simplest truth table we can make 
um, we fill in the values for A, so all the possible values for A are true and false. And remember, uh, the number of rows we have is the 2 to the number of operands. So that's 2 to the 1, which is equal to 2 rows. <clears throat> and then to fill in our truth table, we simply say, well, if A is equal to true, then not A is equal to false. And if A is equal to false, then not A is equal to true. And that's, that's how we go through and fill out this truth tables. <clears throat> So yeah, the conjunction A and B has a value of true when both propositions A and B have a value of true. Otherwise, A and B has a value of false. So that's, uh, so if I filled in all the possible values for, for A and B, we can see that we have uh, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And uh, so there's uh, sort of a, um, it's easier if you, if you do it in that sort of predictable pattern. Um, yeah, and because we have uh, two operands, then we have two to the two rows, which is equal to four rows. Because that is every possible combination of true and false values. And then if we fill this in, well, we know that uh, A and B has a value of true when both propositions A and B have a value of true. So this first, this first one would be true. Um, the next one we have true and false, and that's going to be false A and B. Uh, remember, it's in, in a sense, it's 1 times 0 is equal to 0. If we have false and true, then again we have false. Again, that's like 0 times 1. And if we have false and false, then we of course have false. That's 0 times 0. And uh, yeah, here's a nice cleaner version of it. The disjunction A or B has a value of false when both propositions A and B have a value of false, and otherwise it has a value of true do that so I'll fill it in here so true true so if I want to iterate over all the possible um, combinations of values for a and b so I have true and true they're both true I have true and false false and true false and false this is similar to uh, if you think back to the um, the knights and the knaves problem where the, they can either be you know both knights a knight and a knave uh, a knight and a knave in the, in the other combination, or both knaves. So, um, yeah, so true and true is true. So true or true is true, sorry. True or false is also true. That's, a, again, it's like 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, or 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, so false or true is equal to true. And false or false is like 0 plus 0, and that's equal to false. Ta-da! And useful mnemonics, um, if you like, if this is, if, uh, you know, in the beginning it's normal to, uh, you know, forget uh, which which one of these should be which. So, you know, this looks like an A, so we can use it in AND, and this sort of looks like an R if you use your imagination. So we can use it in OR, and this, man, we're really stretching, but yeah, that looks sort of like an N. <clears throat> Um, so negation, conjunction, and disjunction each correspond to an English language construct. Okay, so all of these, uh, again, we started with, we made declarative statements, and then we converted those. We said, well, each of those has a value. Um, but now these operators also have uh, sort of English equivalents, right? So if I say, if I have a proposition, and my name is John, and I want to negate it, then I can say, my name is not John. Um, if I have two propositions, it is summer, and we are learning math, then I can combine them using and. I can say, it is summer, and we are learning math. And if my proposition is, you like computers, or you need this credit, then I can combine them with or. All right, so that's not, uh, it's very, very similar to the, you know, sort of more precise mathematical structure we saw, um, and you can do conversions. So how do we translate? Uh, so we recall the knights and the knaves. Um, so we consider an English assertion to convert it to a logical expression. We consider the questions. Um, and what we're talking about really is under what condition is this uh, conjunction uh, true and, and in wonder, under what conditions is it false? And really it follows the same 
sort of pattern that we saw with our um, truth tables. So uh, if I'm using an or and both of my propositions are true, then my my conjunction of those two propositions is going to be true, or disjunction, sorry. <clears throat> so we want to think about under what conditions are they lying, under what conditions are they telling the truth, and under what conditions is this correct or incorrect. <clears throat> right, so we still, even, uh, even though we have these longer propositions, we still want to assign a single uh, truth value to it. So either true, this can be either true or false, and this can be either true or false. So after we, and it follows this, the similar rules of logic that we were looking at earlier. <clears throat> so we consider the assertion, my name is John. So what is the atomic proposition in this expression? Or my name is not John. What is the atomic proposition? So we denote the proposition, my name is John, as J. So again, we assign these to variables just to help simplify our expressions. So consider the assertion, my name is John. So under what conditions is this true? Well, that, I mean, it seems pretty clear, right? So if somebody who s said, my name is John, if their name actually is John, uh, then that's true. They've said something that's true. That assertion is true. It has a truth value. Under what conditions is this a lie? Well, uh, if my name is Daryl and I say, hi, my name is John, um, then I've made a declarative statement that is false. <clears throat> So, yeah, so now we have this, we have our, our proposition, and we have, uh, and that corresponds to this, this, this proposition, this assertion. So the person making the assertion is John. If that's the case, uh, then we have a truth value, a true value here. If the person making the assertion is not John, then we have uh, the false value here. And so then if I say my name is not John, um, then I simply take this true value and I switch it to false or this false value and switch it to true, right? So if my name is Daryl and I say my name is not John, um, well then my name is John has a value of false, but my, if I say my name is not John, that has a value of true. I've actually made a statement that has a truth value to it. So consider the assertion, it is summer and we are in math class. So what are the atomic propositions in this expression? So um, again, as a hint, I've pointed out sort of the, the conjunction, the, uh, the binary operator that we're using. Um, so if we divide it roughly, you know, to the left of the end and right of the end, then we have uh, a proposition, it is summer, and we can denote that as S, and a proposition, we are in math class, and we will denote that as M. So we have our propositions. Um, so now under what conditions is this truth? Is this true? Um, <clears throat> well, it's true if it is summer and uh, this is a math class. So if both of those conditions are met, then our statement, it is summer and we are in math class, uh, as given up here, is true, has a value of true. <clears throat> under what conditions is this a lie? So if I made this statement, um, but it is not summer if it is in fact winter, but it's still a math class, well then, yeah, this is this has a value of false. Uh, or sorry, this, this, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, this has a value of false in that case. <clears throat> if it is summer and this is a biology class, well then uh, this proposition is true, but this proposition is false, and this has a value of false again. Um, if it is winter and in its biology class, then basically I've said nothing that's true, <clears throat> so then of course it's false. And essentially, uh, we can boil it down to any season that is not summer, and any class that is not math uh, will give us a false. Uh, that, that logical expression will evaluate to false. Okie dokie. <clears throat> All right, so this is the truth table for that uh, logical expression that we just had um, using this conjunction operator. Um, so S is, it is summer, so that's this, and uh, M is, we are in math class. 
Um, so if it is summer in math class, then we have true and true. Uh, if it is summer but it is not math class, we have true and false. If it's not summer, if it's winter or fall or spring, um, then we have a false here, but we are still in math class, and that's true. And if it is not summer and not math class, then we have false in both cases. Um, so using our AND logical operator here, which is, corresponds to this um, English sort of operator, um, <clears throat> we can evaluate these things. So if it's if it is summer and is math class are both true, then the statement it is summer and we are in math class is of course true. Um, and in every other case, um, at least one of these propositions uh, has a value of false, which means that all of these, all the rest of these, evaluate to false because at least one of these was false. <clears throat> So let's consider another assertion. So you like computers, or you need this credit. Um, hopefully you like computers. Maybe it's both. Um, so what are the atomic propositions? Well, I underline them if you sort of take everything to either side of the or. <clears throat> um, then we can say, well, we can denote you like computers. So what are the atomic propositions in this expression? Well say that you like computers is L for like and you need this credit as N for need. So uh, again we are assigning these two variables to simplify our, our final expressions. <clears throat> um, so here's our assertion you like computers or you need this credit. Now under what conditions is this correct or true? Under what conditions does this have a value of true? Well if I like computers, then uh, then that's true. There, or if you like computers, that's true. So if you like computers or you need this credit, uh, and it's true that you like computers, then this assertion becomes true. Um, if you need this credit, <coughs> then whether or not you like computers, you do need this credit, so then this assertion, you like computers or you need this credit, is true. Um, and if they're both true, then obviously you like computers or you need this credit is true then that's, that evaluates the true as well. So now you have to be a little bit careful with English because sometimes in English when we use <clears throat> or, we mean something different. We mean, you know, if I say uh, you can go to a stoplight, you're at the stoplight, you could turn right or left. Well, well I don't mean both. Um, you really have to choose one or the other. Um, so in English it's not always <clears throat> perfectly clear, so you have to pay attention to the context a lot of the times. <clears throat> So, but getting back to our, our example here, if you like computers or you need this credit, the only way it can be false is if you don't like computers and you don't need this credit. If both of those are satisfied, then this assertion is false. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. If you don't like computers or you don't need this credit, then, I don't know, maybe like math. Um, so again, just explicitly sort of taking this English expression and then making a truth table out of it based on the propositions uh, you like computers or you need this credit. Um, we can say that uh, it's true that I like computers and it's true that I need it. Um, maybe I like it, but I don't need it. I don't like it, but I do need it. And I don't like it and I don't need it. So they're both false. And then, um, so this. This evaluates to true as long as one of these uh, propositions is true, and false if they are both false. So that's how the logical OR operator works, and that's generally speaking how we interpret it when we when we translate from English, but not always, of course. <clears throat> so mathematical expressions you can build it using sort of this this. If you take a look here, we have a simple set of rules. So an expression, um, you know, at the base case, it's a number. So if I say 5, that's, that's technically a mathematical expression. We don't normally think of it that way, but it is. And then we can apply operators to that <coughs> and or combine it. So I can use the negation of an expression. So that's a unary operator. So I only need one expression. And then a unary operator can um, and apply that to that expression, and then I get another expression. <coughs> Or I can take the sum, the product, etc., of two expressions. 
So I can use some binary operator and two expressions and combine them. Um, so ri written sort of formally, um, you know, if we have a number, that's an expression. Um, the negation of an expression is an expression. An expression plus an expression is an expression. Expression times an expression is an expression, et cetera, et cetera. So this is uh, this is for math, and we'll see that we have something very similar, of course, for propositional logic. So complex expressions are formed from simpler sub-expressions. Uh, the sub-expressions <coughs> in math can be evaluated and the results substituted back into the original expression. This is formally known as reduction, and, I, and I'm sure that's something that you're, you're familiar with. So we take this example. So this is a mathematical expression, and it's basically a bunch of sub-expressions combined into a larger, more complex expression. Um, and we know basically the order of operations and, well, everything's spelled out explicitly here with parentheses. So even if we didn't know the order of operations, we would know that, hey, we would have to evaluate this first before we evaluated this because the 8 minus 3 is in, is in brackets. So if I had something like, so I could evaluate that to 5 plus 1 and then divided by 3 and then plus over here. Um, 7 minus 4, I could take it as a 3, times 2. All right, so I, I've evaluated some of the sub-expressions, and then I've substituted those back into the original expression. And I've gotten, uh, and I've reduced the original expression. So now I can look in these brackets here. I have 6, and then that's to be divided by 3, and then the 3 times the 2 is equal to 6. Um, so 6 divided by 3 is 2 plus 6 and uh, that's equal to 8. So this this entire expression through this process of reduction can uh, we can come down to a single value of 8. <coughs> Let's see if I got that right. Hooray! Alright. Um, <coughs> similarly uh, we can build these logical expressions. So every logical expression is either a truth value i.e. true or false um, and that applies to I mean that's so when we say truth value we also mean proposition because a proposition um, has a truth value to it all right so when we say truth value we're including uh, you know atomic propositions <coughs> as long as they have a known value so we can take the logical not of an expression uh, to build another expression, or we can uh, take one of these binary operators and or or of two other logical expressions. So written formally, um, an expression is either a value of true or false. Um, it's the negation or the not of that value. It's an expression, or sorry, the negation or the not of an expression. Uh, and it's an expression or an expression, or it could be an expression and an expression. And there are other, uh, we're going to see other binary operators as well. <coughs> These are just the, the simplest ones. These are the building blocks. These are the, This is the starting point. So for example, uh, similar to what we did before, we're going to use this process of reduction to, um, to uh, get down to the, to what is the, the single value of this expression. All right, so if we have not f, so that's a, a negation of f, so that's uh, not false, so that means that's true, and that's true or true, and false, <coughs> or, and then I take, oops, um, yeah, so I would first do what's in the brackets here, so false and false. So this is the negation of what's in the brackets. So false and false, if we look back to our truth table and use and the and operator, um, we'll see that false and false is equal to false. So this is not false. <coughs> true or true, again, we can refer back to our truth table. We can see that that's equal to true. So we have true and false here. Or uh, not false is true. Um, so again, we, we look in our brackets first. So true and false, that evaluates the false or true. 
and then false or true is of course if we look back into our truth table it evaluates to true so let's see if I made any mistakes here yeah. all right so that seems simple enough even simpler than math as long as you remember you know the, the truth table <coughs> of each of these operators we can solve a general expression as well um, so we have these um, so we're combining math expressions and these are uh, we can apply them to mathematical expressions and these will evaluate to either true or false as well um, yeah so again we're gonna start in the uh, innermost brackets so we're gonna start with the 6 plus 1 here so we have a not and then I we do have to count brackets perhaps so we have 7 greater than 7 and I believe it goes like this and 4 greater than 3 that's not greater than or equal to so I have 4 greater than 3 and that's true um, and then or false okay. <clears throat> so now I look into my yeah, deepmost bracket my innermost bracket so I have a not here so 7 is 7 greater than 7 well no 7 is actually equal to 7 so this is false so false and true or false um, this false and true uh, if we look back to our truth table uh, using the and operator um, true and false is equal to false so again we have not false or false um, this not false is equal to true or false and that's equal to true okay um, and a little something about order of operations um, generally speaking you apply negation first and there is sort of rules in terms of um, so for us we're going to our order of operations is uh, parentheses that's it everything will be made explicit with parentheses uh, parentheses I don't know how to spell it Ugh. that's terrible spell check has ruined me <clears throat> um, maybe something like that I don't know brackets Um, we're going to make everything explicit with brackets, okay? So now there are um, sort of schools of thought on this where you would do, uh, I don't remember whether it's the and or the or first. So I think you follow the sort of, when we when we um, likened it to multiplication, I believe you do and first in terms of order operations and then or second. But we're not doing that in this class because um, we are um, simulating logic circuits. Uh, and logic circuits... Uh, the order of operations is explicit based on how the circuits are laid out so there is no you know um, agreed upon order of operations you have to be explicit with your with your brackets because of, of what you're simulating um, so a lot of programming languages when you do these when you build these sort of logical expressions they do have a specific order of operations and I think it's and first and or second uh, but you'd have to look that up um, so a lot of people follow that convention we do not Okay, everything will be made explicit with brackets <clears throat> and generally speaking um, negation goes first uh, if, if you're in doubt but uh, you should never be in doubt <clears throat> all right true did I get that right all right <clears throat> so um, the atomic expressions in each of these you know expressions had a definite value so we can always evaluate them um, if we if we have a variable though that can take on different values then it's it's not possible to, to evaluate so I can't evaluate this expression because I don't know what X is um, so we can't reduce it however maybe we know that X can take on a finite set of values so in this case maybe X is 1 X is 2 or X is 3 but X is definitely one of those values <coughs> Um, now we can actually enumerate all the possible solutions. 
right? So if we had an expression that had a, a variable in it, um, and that variable had a finite set of values, then we can say, well, you know, we can drew, draw our little our table and say, well, if x is equal to 1, well, then this is going to be equal to 6, for instance. And then we can, we can evaluate that for each of these. <coughs> So, and of course, as we've said already, the variables in propositional logic have a finite set of possible values. That is true or false. So it is always possible to enumerate all the possible solutions to an expression. So, um, you know, if we have our, our variables, uh, earlier we did, uh, you know, J for my name is John, or N for you need this credit. Um, even if we don't know explicitly the, the value of those propositions, we know it can only be one of two things. So uh, we can evaluate all the possible solutions. For instance, x or true. So the possible values for x are true or false. So when x is true, the solution is true. And when x is false, the solution is false. Um, yeah, so we can, we can iterate over all the possible solutions to that expression. Likewise, x and y, well, we know that x and y can both take on true or false, so that means all the possible values are here, and then we can enumerate all the solutions. And this is, you know, very much what we did with the truth tables. <clears throat> so let's, let's consider a more complex expression. Okay, so we saw basically the truth tables for our binary operators and our unary operator, but now we're going to we're gonna do a truth table for a, for a larger expression. So I want to draw your attention to a couple things as we do this. So we're going to start with C. C can take on two values, true or false. Alright, so then we can start our table with C and we have true or false. Um, now we add B. B has two possible values and you'll notice that the number of rows doubled. So when we added another operand, uh, the number of rows in our truth table doubled. So we had, and we had true false here for C, and we duplicate that for the, you know, when we double the number of rows, we just duplicate the, the, um, the values that all are already in our table, and then B takes on, you know, true, true, false, false, so that we get every combination of true and false values. <clears throat> Now we add a third operand, and again, you'll notice that the size of our table doubled again. All right, so this is that, so since we have two operands, we have two to the three equals eight rows. But you can also think of it as I start with, if I start with a single operand, I have two rows, and then every time I add another operand, I double the number of rows. <clears throat> and again, um, so we take all of these values, and we've duplicated them down here. And then we've gone through all the possible true cases for A and then all the possible false cases for A. Okay, so now in order to get the complete truth table for our expression, we start to evaluate the, the sub-expression. So we, we add a column for this sub-expression A and B. Okay, and uh, it's quite simple to do this. We just basically follow the same rules that we've been following already. So we take the value in A and the value in B. <clears throat> so we know that true and true gives us true. Okay, and we can ignore C in this case because it's not part of this sub-expression. So then we look again, A and B, uh, in this row, they're both true. So for this row, we're gonna, we're gonna put a true here. Then we have true and false, that gives us false. True and false, that gives us false again. False and true, that gives us false. False and true, that gives us false. And then false and false, and false and false again. <clears throat> so that's our column for A and B, and you'll notice a lot of, there's uh, each of these is repeated. Um, uh, so, so these two are repeated here, and then these two are repeated here. Um, but for each of them, we have a, a different value for C. So every time, uh, uh, so each of these rows is distinct, even if uh, the little sub rows that we use for A and B are not. Now, when we do the, our next column, um, in order to save space, we can we 
can introduce another variable d and that d is equal to a and b and then we can evaluate our d or c so if we look at here if we substitute d in for a and b uh, then we get d or c as our as our new expression um, so what that means is that we're going to take the value here and we're going to apply the or operation to the value here so true or true is equal to true false or true is equal to true true or false is equal to true uh, false or false is equal to false true or false is equal to true false or false is equal to false true or false is equal to true and false or false is equal to false <clears throat> all right so now we have our final uh, row in our truth table and that gives us the uh, the complete truth table for this expression and this is sort of this is in a sense the definition of this expression <clears throat> And we're going to see actually in later classes that uh, we can use this final column to establish uh, equivalent expressions. So maybe I have another expression uh, that does not look like this, but produces this exact uh, final column in the truth table. Then that we know that uh, that expression is logically equivalent to this expression. And we're going to see that uh, a little later. <coughs> so. I mentioned earlier that uh, largely we're modeling this off the logic of electric circuits. So this is discrete math, uh, you know, but we're leaning towards computer science applications. So all of the logic we, we see here is, is going to be a, um, a sort of a, a model of electric circuits. <clears throat> uh, because these electric circuits, you know, they're not only a model of electric circuits, but they're also we replicate these in, in the in the code that we write in the in the programming languages that we use. So, um, so yeah, the logic of electric circuits uses the same truth values and operators. Uh, circuit diagrams use different symbols to represent each operation. Um, so each oper each symbol supports connections for the different operands and results. So this is maybe a bit of a word salad at the moment, but <clears throat> um, when we draw these. Uh, circuit diagrams there are these components that act as logical operators um, so essentially everything in your computer operates on the idea of if there's some voltage there then that's sort of a one um, or, a, or a truth value and if there's no voltage then it's a zero or a false value so it's about five volts for a one and then um, if it's around zero volts it's uh, it's a zero or a false and then so we have these these components these circuit components that act if I have um, some five volts coming in here then this acts as a as a not gate and so I have zero volts coming out here um, this acts as an and so if I have say uh, zero volts and five volts then I would get zero volts out because I'm anding uh, false and true in a sense. However, if I had five volts coming into both of them, um, then it would output uh, it would output five volts. <coughs> and the OR is this, and of course it operates uh, as you would expect an OR would. Um, if I have zero, if either one of those is five volts, then I get five volts out the output. <coughs> So that's this is uh, yeah, this was meant to do uh, what I actually showed you over here. So we're going to skip that slide. <clears throat> so now you can build these circuit diagrams. Now you can see, hopefully, uh, why we do things expressly with parentheses because um, the order of operations is going to be enforced here. The voltage flows from A, B, C, and D, <clears throat> and it can't pa possibly pass through this AND before it passes through these these two OR gates. So in a, in a, in a circuit diagram, um, the order of operations is very explicit. So uh, in this class, we use um, parentheses uh, whenever possible to sort of mimic that. <clears throat> that, that we're not using conventions. We're, use, we're being explicit. <clears throat> um, 
but yes, yeah, so this this can actually we can think of this as a so the you know um, the line A, B, C, and D they each have some voltage value, and we can evaluate what this logic circuit outputs basically. So we want the output over here. Um, so to do that, we can sort of uh, similar to what we did before, where we had um, did we have A and B or C, and then we combined A and B into D or C. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to have these intermediate um, variables that we can assign these these intermediate values to. So if we have A, and once it passes through this this logical NOT gate. Uh, then we're going to call it E. So not A uh, is equivalent to E. And so now if we look at this OR gate here, now we have F is the combination of E and B. So it's E or B is equal to F. Um, and we look over here to this OR. So now we have G, which is the combination of C and D. So we have C or D is equal to G. <clears throat> and we have H. So now this is an AND gate. And we're ANDing the value at F with the value at G. So H is equal to F and G. So H gets F and G. <clears throat> um, and then H, of course, this is uh, not H over here because we passed through this NOT gate. Um, so that's our result in that, uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, so we call that our result. Okay, so now we can work our way backwards from our result. <clears throat> so we know that our H is equal to, so our result is equal to not H, and now we can substitute for H our F and G, so that goes back to what we established here. Um, and now for our F and for our G, well, we can see here our F is uh, made up of E or B. So we're going to substitute E or B here. And our G is made up of C or D. Um, so we're going to substitute that for our G. And we're going to keep the brackets there to make sure that everything stays explicit. Finally, uh, we can look at our E and we can substitute our not A for E. So that's where we get that. And now we have this final expression. So our result is equal to this expression. So that's this this, this result here. <clears throat> Alright, and so you can kind of play with that. Um, so here's a couple of things you might want to look at. This is a, a website. Uh, I'm not that familiar with it. Um, that's from Robert. Um, so it's both of these basically are games that are based on um, predicting the output of these circuits. So you can you can try them out. Uh, they're not that difficult. They're actually quite quite easy. Um, and there, this is uh, if you go into the the app store in Google, uh, there's a whole bunch of them there. And I'm sure if you Googled logic uh, logic gate apps, then um, iPhone store or whatever it is. I'm not really in the, the uh, Apple ecosystem, but uh, so yeah, whatever the, the iStore or the App Store, I think it's the App Store. Um, you, you can go Google these logic gate games as well, and you can, uh, yeah, so they're a good way to get some practice and stuff. And, um, that's it for uh, introduction to propositional logic.